Welcome to the 2020 overview of Brizzy. I am JP and this is our channel dedicated to Brizzy Learn Brizzy. In this video, we are going to look at shape dividers. How do you apply shape dividers? Where do you get them? And then new features that rolled out in 2020. This applies to the Brizzy Builder for all free and pro versions, which means it also includes the Brizzy WordPress plugin as well as Brizzy Cloud. So applicable across the board. I have this design here and you apply shape dividers between blocks. So you're going to access it within block settings. So within this block here, I'll go up here to the top right hand corner, click on the settings and you'll get it under the settings and then more settings. Now, one of the new features that rolled out in 2020 is the ability to dock this options sidebar or more options sidebar. And you do that by clicking on this lock up there and you will see the lock closes. If you have a very small screen, it will look like nothing happens, but it will lock and it will say lock and unlock as you hover over it and the tooltip appears. You can also dock it to the left and this may come in handy, especially with features like the divider where you want to see a little bit more what's going on at the top and the bottom on a specific side. Once you go into the more options, you will see here within the block more option setting for dividers. You have this one here and the one next to it. The difference between these two, this is a divider at the top of your block and a divider at the bottom. So let's see how that works. Go to type, select none and you will see there's a list of dividers that can be applied. Now this often gets noobs because they think for, wow, Brizzy, you guys are so progressive. You just have to scroll down. So you see the little handle, you can either drag it like this or just scroll if you have a scroll on your mouse and go through it. There's quite a number of it. And I think it's at this point where I will say dividers and myself, come a long way since they've been introduced. And I'm one of those people who hardly ever touch them. I think they can get a little bit too much and I'm constantly in a struggle whether that extra effort really pays off for a visitor. Does it really compel your visitor to take some action on your site and go for a call to action? Or does it just make things a little bit more complicated? Yes. In some cases, it's very aesthetical and it looks really good, but that extra step to go through it and do all the changes and make all the decisions, does it really have a functional impact on your site? I don't have an answer for that. And maybe you can give me your two cents on that as well. But for me, I've decided that I do not really touch dividers. Sometimes I'll use these guys at the top, really, and, and they will be transitional dividers. And I'll tell you soon what I mean by that. But these guys here, no, I, I hardly ever, unless I'm going for a kindergarten effect, I will use these kind of dividers. Let's see how that works. Let's go to the top one and select the one just under none. And you will see that this black bar with this diagonal slice appears here at the top. And that is a divider. Now by itself here at the top, especially for this block, it doesn't have much of an impact, especially the black doesn't look that good. And that's where you can go now and change a few things here. Now in my case, because my screen resolution is 4K and I've increased the size and display to 150%, I run into this issue that some of this appears behind this toolbar. Now there are two things that happen. You can see those two buttons there at the bottom. There are two things that you can do to overcome this. The first one is you can dock this more options sidebar to the left and it will open that for you. Let's put it back on the right. The other one is you can decrease if you need to go into that, the resolution of your screen and that you're going to do with control command and scroll wheel to get to a smaller size within Chrome or whichever browser you are using. If you try the control plus or control minus, which usually works, it's not going to work because control minus within Brizzy is going to take you to responsive view of tablet and another one will take you into mobile. So it's not going to work. So just remember, if you've got a little wheel on your mouse, you can scroll with that like so, or you can just simply dock it to the left, dock it to the right. Okay. 
But now we need to get back to our divider and we have to get to our block setting. So let me unlock this. Oh, I could have put it on the left. Let's go back to settings. And I'm just going to pop it to the left. So here we've got this divider. We can change the color. So under type, and let's just choose a different type so you can see how the types all work. All right, there's one, and let's choose one of those funky ones. Okay, the zigzag, not bad. Okay, and then wavies. Oh, that does look nice, and it can work under certain circumstances. And then, of course, like I mentioned, you can change the color. So over here to your color picker, let's choose this white swatch. This looks a little bit better, but it doesn't work at the top of your page. This will work between blocks, but this kind of divider, the wavy thing, there must be something on top of it. Otherwise, it just looks strange there at the top. Let's just, well, let's leave it there. We'll just put it back on something a little bit more reasonable like this. And then under this, you're going to get the, what is this, vertical stretch, the height of it. And you can see how this moves. And we lose this word there because it's white. But this will give you the stretch. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that it's in pixels currently, and I can put it on percentage. And then, of course, your slider is going to take you to 100%. The question I always have when I see a percentage is 100% of what? So let's stretch it all the way to the right. And then I'll just flip it again to the right. And you will see the 100% is going to be the height of your block. If I go to the block here and I just drag out, you can see I'm dragging here the padding at the top and the bottom. Then you see that it remains from the top right hand corner stretched to the bottom left hand corner. So that is what the 100% is going to do. It's going to apply the height for the divider all the way from the top to the bottom. Settings more settings and let's lock it again and then let's see what we've got under our height is flip let's just reduce the percentage a little bit and then we flip it and flip is going to do this one i'm always confused when i work in photoshop i always get it wrong i try to flip the image and in my opinion this should be a vertical flip well i'm pretty sure Photoshop is going to tell me it's a horizontal flip. doesn't matter, but it flips it to the other side. Now you have it on that side, and then you have alignment. Now alignment is basically bringing it to the front or taking it to the back. So I'll de-flip it, and then I'll just increase it like so. And you can see currently our text is in front of this divider. And if I click arrangement here on the right, it covers it. This option you rarely use, and I've used it once in my life, and I'm trying to figure out why did I get to that point and trying to replicate that situation. And as much as I try to think about it, you know, it just doesn't come to mind. There are situations where you will run into where you may want to bring that into the front. Let's take this down. Now, one of the new features that came in with 2020 is now you also have full control over which divider displays on which responsive control. And we are referring to tablet and then we are referring to mobile. Now, when you go to tablet, go here to the sidebar, click on the screen and select tablet. Select our block again with the settings. You will see now, which previously was called the more settings bar is now just settings. And within the settings bar, everything that can be changed in the tablet view will appear here. Things that cannot will not appear here. This is a very great feature within Brizzy because a lot of page builders have responsive controls. The problem is that sometimes you click on something and then you find out, oh, well, I cannot do that in mobile. Oh, I cannot do that in tablet. And Brizzy approached this, very, in my opinion, correctly from the beginning to eliminate those things that are not applicable to that specific display. So what you see here is what you can change. And more or less, everything remains the same for the block. Now, previously, you could make some changes to the divider, very few. 
but now you also have the control over choosing a different divider. So if I go and I choose one of those funky called Medina ones, right, something like this. All right, do you see what we did here? We changed it. Now, how about the desktop view? Let's go back to desktop, select desktop, and you see it's still the same divider that we had when we had selected it for desktop. Go and select mobile. Now, for example, and I've definitely ran into a situation like this, select the block settings that I had a mobile and the divider just didn't work on the mobile. What about not having a divider on mobile? Let's go to type, select none, and let's cycle through the different views. I told you that shortcut key at the beginning, control minus or control plus. So I'm going to go for control command plus and I'm back into my tablet. Hmm. And there's my wavy divider and control plus and there is my diagonal divider. Just like you can apply a divider at the top, so you can apply a divider at the bottom. Now, this is more where I use dividers, and this is what I refer to as a transitional divider. That is a little bit something to do with graphic design, where here you have this hard line, and sometimes you want something a little bit softer on the eye. So what you do is that you can apply a divider here at the bottom of this block. It's already docked, so what's going to happen the moment I click here, the more settings are going to open. Very nifty if you leave it open like so. Now we scroll to the bottom and where you see dividers, remember we worked with this one at the top, now you simply select the bottom one. Again, you have to select a type and here, clue, tip, keep your dividers consistent. Don't jump around between various dividers. If you go for that diagonal slice, keep it diagonal. But let's choose a different one. Maybe let's choose the second one from the top, which has got that transparency applied there for a second layer. And let's change the color also to white. You see what we've got here now? Now this looks interesting. That has some impact. And what you notice here is that this is the swatch that has been selected and the opacity applied over here is 20 or 21 percent so this one is going to be a little bit of a challenge but we're going to try and wangle it so let's see the easier one is to change this one so let's change this one we're going to change in let's put it like so ah, we can change that one later and then we go to the top one and we select the same swatch there you go so you have this kind of transition now that looks pretty nice this looks like it's actually part of the block below it because you have this overlapping appearance there for this tablet display. But in fact, you've only applied a divider. And that is the shape divider within Brizzy for both WordPress and cloud, also for free and for pro. Shape dividers have really come a long way since the first time they've been rolled out in Brizzy and it really can help to Cruise up your website a little bit or just add a little bit of pizzazz here and there if you need it. Just remember those few tips that I gave you on how you must ensure consistency. For example, if you're going to be using these diagonal lines, it is a good idea to apply it across the entire page. The moment you scroll from here to here, you have an inconsistent application. Now you have this hard flat line and it feels actually strange. It feels like somebody started designing it here at the top and then boom, suddenly you have this flat line. So remember, dividers need to be applied consistently. Two, don't use different style dividers on your page. You can use a diagonal one like this. You can flip it. You can change the height, things like that. But don't go for wavy, zigzaggy and then straight lines on the same page. And that wraps it up for this 2020 edition of Shape Dividers within Brizzy. Hope you have a great day wherever you are. Please stay safe. See you in the next video. This is JP signing off.